morning, everyone. So before I actually get to your report, and this is the Global Happiness Policy Report for 2018. Who's actually read it? <laughs> I'm sorry? You want a copy and you'll read it. Yes. Can we, we'll give you a coffee later. All right, before we begin, look. First of all, who's happy here? All right, let me reverse that question. Who's not happy here? All right, um, John, what's in this report? Why do I care about a report this heavy that frankly would hold up the air conditioner during the summer? This report is trying to fill the gap between the emerging science of happiness and the, the wish of people all over the world to have happier lives. And that gap has to be filled by the people in governments whose job it is to find those policies. And our attempt has been in through six theme groups to dr draw together ideas from all over the world that are being tested and what are the results and then what needs to be done at the next stage to deliver better ideas for use. Very we, practical. We know that happiness is more than just feeling good. It's not sort of a, com a comedic exercise. Uh, the, the learned professor this morning spoke about, about that. In this year's report, and I think it's really important that we build on what we've discussed in previous years at this event. So we're not just going over the same old pablum ground. Uh, Jeffrey, what's new and different that we need to be concerned about? First, uh, I want to really thank uh, the UAE uh, minister. Thank you for bringing together uh, experts and practitioners so that we can really leave something for people to study, to take home, to work on. And Minister Bang Bang uh, has shown, here's a government in Indonesia, 200 million people plus 250 million taking very seriously what do we do, how do we measure what's happening in our country, uh, what are the different challenges that we face. So it, it's the hard work of happiness. And this report, with real experts in health, in education, in schooling, in personal well-being, have brought best practices, examples, what to measure, how you can put into practice an actual program, how you can diagnose why things are not going well. In our country, Richard, uh, we know wealth is up, happiness is down. It's dramatic in the United States. We have a crisis of uh, mental illness. We have a crisis of uh, opioid addiction. People are rich, but they're not happy. And so studying why that is, what to do about it, and how to implement is really, it's, it's serious business. And I think that this report and the reports that will follow will really help governments to get this done. Can I put in a plea to this audience? This audience, for the first time, is a mix of experts and people in governments who are wanting to find out how to make the science work. This report is a distillation of ideas and experiments all over the world. It will only be as good in its next version as the stuff that comes in from people like you. Could you help us do it? even better. All right, so mental health is in this report. Right, don't applaud him yet, he hasn't given you a good answer on, on, on what's different in this report. Mental health, education, <clears throat> issues of social connections are all dealt with in this report. Are we getting, are things getting better or are they getting worse? Both, some places one, some places the other. This is the World Happiness Report which is a, a parallel complementary report, is really what the place where we document how are things doing and the science underlying it. This report is quite different. This report is saying, what can we do about the situations we're in where they're in? So it's not about monitoring the state, it's about building a better one. Okay, so if we are building a better one and this report takes best practice and guides us towards it, where should we begin, Jeffrey? I think uh, we can see in this report that people live their lives uh, in the workplace, in the home, 
as citizens, uh, and uh, also with the problems, uh, for instance, the, the burden of mental health, which is featured very widely here. So a government spans those areas, and that's why a government should take up the evidence here and say to the ministers, and here we have the coordinating minister for Indonesia, uh, the head of uh, the planning ministry, okay, what are we going to do across all of these different uh, areas. Again, let me come back to the United States uh, just as an example. We have soaring mental health crisis right now, and that's not simply uh, a casual statement, though you might make it for obvious reasons. Uh, we, we have serious evidence that the prevalence and incidence of deep depression is rising significantly. We have rising suicide rates. We have rising uh, opioid uh, uh, epidemic uh, deaths. I document that in our World Happiness Report coming out next month, which is the companion volume each year of this. But uh, Lord Richard Laird, who's here, who's an expert on, and one of the authors uh, of uh, a key chapter on mental health, has illustrated at low cost one can make a massive progress in addressing this. But in the United States, as rich as we are, most people with the mental illness and depression are not getting professional treatment. There's no, uh, there, there's no approach, even in the most basic policy terms. And so this chapter uh, of uh, Lord Richard Laird spells out what can be done. And I'm gonna take it home to the United States and say, look, this is the urgent challenge for our own country right now. Can I just put in a plea that we're just shills here for talking about the report. I'd really like to invite people to come back to this room tomorrow evening when each of the seven, six substance chapters will be presented here uh, and wanting to get your replies. Is there a feeling, John, that the message is getting out to government? Now, here in the UAE, there is the minister, Indonesia has the coordinating minister, but are there still too many governments that either silo the in individual issues or simply haven't bought on to the idea of, I mean, maybe because the word happiness itself does conjure up the idea of a clown with a red nose? Absolutely. No, it, the progress is there, but very slow. There are statistical agencies who still don't even collect subjective well-being data right around the world. There are a lot of people who take it, as you say, just as, oh, that's all very nice, but tomorrow morning I'll go back to my office and do my job just the way I did yesterday. That's not good enough. You have to have a real seat. The way you deliver health care, the way you deliver education, the way you do everything, it takes a long time, but I keep seeing uh, ground swells uh, starting out there in the public, and in the long run, the governments will really only sit up and take notice if their citizens say, we want you to. And I was struck the other, to read the other day that they offered a course at Yale uh, this term for the first time on happiness and the good life. And that's an important combination, right? This isn't just, you know, how to make yourself happy. This is about how to make a good life for you and others. I think it's true that a quarter of the whole undergraduate population has signed up for that course. Uh, and it's the uh, biggest course that's ever, biggest that's ever been in the university in its history. Well, that tells you something. Right, we'll take some questions from the audience in, in, in just one second. Um, so if you do have a question, please. The, the, the whole point of these events is not just so that you can come and watch the performing animals on the stage. Um, you know, we can perform, we are all well used to performing, I assure you. Uh, and we can keep doing it, but it'd be much better <laughs> if it's a dialogue. Would you agree, uh, Absolutely. Jeff, Jeffrey? And uh, I just want to point out, uh, if you have already read this report, you're doing well because it was not released until today. So, so don't feel bad. Uh, the, uh, uh, our hosts will be making copies available and there will be online copies for downloading uh, around the world. And so today is the launch actually of this new report and the launch of this process 
and the dialogue that uh, our uh, host, uh, the United Arab Emirates, is making possible is an incredible breakthrough. It's possible to make this uh, now spread because of your work, Minister, and that is really our intention. It will not happen by itself, but more and more governments are wanting to take this up and you're making it possible, and I think it's a great global public service. This issue of social connections, all right, let's just talk about this issue. Yes. Particularly bearing in mind the change that Zuckerberg announced with Facebook. You, I mean, we cannot divorce Facebook with its 1.8 billion or 2 billion users or whatever from this question of well-being, connectivity, uh, relevance of happiness. And this connection and this change that they made, uh, John Halliwell, to the algorithm so that people have more meaningful connections. How can we do that? Well. There are lots of, fortunately, there are lots of people thinking about this, but the technology and its use are evolving even faster than our ability to think about it. If you th think about the changes that have been uh, taking place, we're going to have a chapter in next year's World Happiness Report on social media and their effects on happiness and big data uh, similarly. Uh, because that's an interesting one, because there is going to be relatively huge amounts of big data on that because the companies involved are collecting it. Well, they are on both sides of that issue for sure, yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, sad to say, some of the early evidence is that the heavy use of uh, the social media is driving us a little crazy. Uh, so it's not all good. Uh, some of the evidence is that young people that are online long hours are experiencing depression. They're experiencing more uh, mental uh, uh, burdens because of this. This is something very serious. Uh, and this is what the psychologists are telling us. We have a real problem here. Let, let me put in one footnote to that. There is a positive. The IEEE, which is the group that designs the rules that, that control the norms for the people who develop the internet are thinking quite explicitly about redesigning and designing those rules so that it should make and enable the users to be happy. Question, sir. Do we have microphones? Yeah, you can always shout. Who are you? Good morning, Isa Basaki from University of Dubai. Yes. Yes, sir, actually, uh, I'm the uh, honorary chair of IEEE in UAE, by the way, you just mentioned. Uh, regarding happiness, when you talk about happiness, do you discuss really something like the fake laughter drive that's going on in the world? Is that something we Did should you look at? the word fake? Yes, fake laughter. Fake laughter. Yeah, and they're trying to do it to make people happy. Have you done some kind of study of this kind of fake laughter drive right now? Fake laughter. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to do it. There is a drive everywhere that you just laugh in the street, you laugh a lot, and then you become happy. And I don't believe that. Do you have any point on well, that? Well, this connectivity uh, by smiles and laughter is well documented and, and real. Uh, the point I was making was it's a lot better if you're trying to start that kind of escalade uh, by being happy in the first place. Gentlemen at the back. Hello. Uh, Ulrich Lengs from the Computer Science Department at Oxford from where? University. Uh, the Computer Science Department at Oxford University. Good. Um, so you say this report is a distillation of the things that governments and policymakers can do. Uh, are there some surprising insights into what they might want to do that could be tempting, but that actually does not work? In other the words, in other words, what should they do that may not happen? One, well, I think he was asking something more, which was, what about the things they ought not to do? Is that correct? Yeah, it's like some, some things that they might think would be a good idea, that turns out to be a really bad idea. Well, our rule book, which isn't followed all that often yet, is measure 
right up front and all the way through the process what you're doing. Be careful to explain what you're doing. Have some other groups you can compare it with and then report it. And this idea of coming back and reporting how these things have gone, people aren't very good about that, as you know. And it's even harder to get the failures reported than to get the successes but reported. all that, uh, Jeffrey. Well, look, the, the main thing that uh, many governments do is they want to promote economic growth. Growth, growth, growth. Raise the stock market, growth. And that is not going to turn into happiness, per se. That's the main lesson. If you don't think about the quality of relations, the community, the way the cities are built, the safety of the physical environment, the mental health of the community, you can have growth and wreck your society. I live in a place like that. Growth, growth, growth but not thinking about happiness. But you'd so accept. that's the main let, message. Let me defend growth. Yes. You would accept that growth is a precursor to all the others. I would accept that it is a one of many things to think about, but if you start with that and end with that, you're going to be creating a lot of unhappiness. If you, if you say you need to get the growth and the wealth before you'll think about happiness, you've got it backwards. But without to be the other way. But without the growth, a lot of your other problems do mushroom. Uh, typically not. The, peop the re really well-connected communities, and we see this all over the world, the communities where large numbers of people live to be 100, and they're happy people, they're, they're almost never high-income communities. They're active, socially connected communities that support each other. Hi, I'm uh, Maaike Bartels. I'm a, genetic in prof a professor in genetics and well-being in Amsterdam. Um, I'm wondering how do you take care of the individual differences between people? Because, for example, in uh, the mental health uh, sector, we tend to use a one-size-fits-all approach. And if government's going to adopt the one-size-fits-all approach, we're never going to make the world a better place. Uh, there's no question that once you start taking the well-being of the patient seriously or the client seriously of a service, then you quite you realize that there's no one right way of doing it. The best way to deal with it is one that involves the recipient of the service actively in the design of their own treatment and lives. Well, of course, that's going to be specific to them and their lives. And so their specificity is not only accepted, it's made central to the design of the policy. And that personal involvement in the redesign of your own life and circumstances is one of the very strongest supports for happiness. Jeffrey, quickly. Just, just to add, most people in the world do not even have any access to services. That's a drama. It's shocking. And so the first thing is think about people need help. They need services. And without that, where we, we can fine tune it, we can refine it. Uh, you're from Sweden, did you say? Amsterdam. Amsterdam, sorry. So there are no doubt ample public services in Amsterdam, but in most places there are not. And that's the starting point, I think. Uh, right. Of course, to refine it is good. But let's get the basics to make sure that people can have the basic things that they need. Last question to the lady over here, because I think we only meant to go 20 minutes. We started late, so we're finishing. Yes. So I'm Dr. Judy Koryansky, a psychology professor, and also who was pleased to work with the Ambassador Palau to make sure mental health and well-being is in the SDGs, and love that UAE has done the International Day of Happiness at the UN. Hi, Jeff. So what are the three, would you suggest, three practical guidelines that governments can do, one, two, three, to increase happiness and follow the lead of UAE? Let me ask you, why three and not just one? <laughs> it's a triumvirate. There, think about it religiously. I'm not going there. It's too early. <laughs> All right, three. Well, that will allow the, the, the good doctor asked for three. Uh, you what, what's the government we're addressing? I've forgotten. <laughs> what's the three things that we should take away? The three most important things in the next 30 seconds that we should take away from your report. Always connect. Always connect for good. 
and always do it in cooperation with other people. That, those are signal factors about all of the particular proposals that work best in this. We talk about small, smart cities in the report. The smartest city is the social city. Jeffrey? We, we saw the steps of, uh, of your pyramid, uh, of uh, the, the base of uh, decent economy, the ecological base, and then the connectivity, the spiritual, the partnership, and I think that those are three fundamental areas. The SDGs encourage that, the happiness agenda aligns with that, uh, and uh, we have uh, good reading material for you to implement that. Ladies and gentlemen, your panel, thank you. <laughs>